Hello everyone, welcome to my Nasdaq YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to continue talking about Microsoft 365 developer subscription. If you follow my previous video, you will see how we can get Office 365 developer subscription and how to integrate with your own domain using Cloudflare. There are some things we need to know that subscription, what it is and how you can use it permanently because it's only valid for 90 days. Here you can see what has been included in this subscription, how many user license, how long is your subscription good for? It's three months, 90 days. And you need to see how did Microsoft determine whether a subscription can be renewed. Basically, you need to be actively developing. What that means, it's not clear here what is actively developing. But one thing we know, once you're using API, then your subscription should be fine. There's a um, GitHub project here, it, which is OneDrive Cloudflare Indexer. So basically, using Cloudflare, this serverless workers to show the OneDrive. So here is an example. Once you can get this project running, and you should be fine to get the new, your new. There are also some discussion on Reddit about how to renew your Office 365 developer subscription, um, such as you can create a project on your SharePoint, you can create it to some Power Automate flow, and uh, set up some Power Apps, and deploy some Power BI template. This kind of things, you can find it. Uh, that will not in today's topic. Today, I'm going to more focus on how to increase your OneDrive space, how to set up your exchange rule to catch all emails. Uh, by default, OneDrive only gave us a one terabyte. Sometimes you may want to get a five terabytes, which is the maximum you can get. Um, then you have to change the settings. It's very simple settings. Just go to your all admin centers and then OneDrive. Storage. As you can see right now, it's just one terabyte. You can change to five terabytes. And you can also see the default storage space explanation from Microsoft. And you also can use PowerShell to do that. So we're going to set it to 5 terabytes and 30 days to retain the files once you delete it. We're going to give quickly verify that. We're going to sign in. I already created a couple of users. So we're going to use in test account to verify this changes. So login with test and your domain which we added into our Microsoft 365 subscription. If it's the first time login then you need to set up a second method to authentication your email and we can use an email to find out and there was a new email message gonna contain that verification code I already got that uh, verification code from separate window so then you will be able to log in to your Microsoft 365 subscription 
So this is a regular user account that doesn't have any administrator uh, permission. So you can see all apps. Not all apps can be used. Some of them does need a license. For example, a project doesn't have license. You cannot create in the project all of maps here. But for Outlook, OneDrive loads should be OK. It still shows one terabyte, even we already changed it. That's because when we creating this account is before we make the changes from one terabyte to five terabytes. Let's log out the list, and we're gonna create a new account, and then we're gonna testify it again. So we're gonna use test one. We log out our test and then we're gonna use test one to sign in. Same thing, they need either your phone number or your email address to verify your account. We got the verification code from our separate window to verify and finish login. Now it login is okay. We can go into OneDrive page. All looks fine. Let's check site usage. Check OneDrive settings. Storage metrics. It's five terabytes now. Okay, that's our first task we done today for this video. Second task, we gonna create in our catch all emails. As you know, our developer subscription only have 25 accounts, basically 25 users. Um, if you have more accounts created, actually you can use catch all emails to catch those emails. You don't have to create in those accounts. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna go to our admin, all admin centers. Go to exchange admin centers. We 
we go to Maya Flow. Lures. Create a new lure. Let's uh, put the name catch all. So we're gonna apply this lure to the sender is outside of the organization. If the sender send it from outside of the organization, then we we're gonna forwarding redirect this message to our NASDAQ user or maybe another user test user as well. And then we can enforce this rule. We don't need an audit for this rule. Just enforce. So once we have this lure created, that means we can use any username under my domain to get the email. And we will have two users receive those outside the emails. In this case, we don't have to create it too many email accounts because we only have 25 of them. So now with Lua created, we're going to test in for this Lua to see if you can receive. Right now we have four users. Let's look at the mailbox. So we have admin, that's sec, test, test one. We don't have test two, test three. So we're going to use test two, test three to test them. gonna go to NASSEC email box and this is our test machine let's see what we check out oh this is test one email box so we're gonna use in this one um, no for sh this is not in our distribution lure list so we're gonna close this one we log in with a new user test. We can send the email account from outside of this organization. For example, I'm using jn at 51sec.org to start to send the email. I'm going to send test2. Okay, now, as you can see, we already received this email from outside. This is for test two. Our account is test. That means our catch-all rule works well. That's basic usage for our Microsoft 365 developer subscription. Thank you for watching.